It's often said that history is written by the winners, while those unlucky enough to land themselves in second place tend to be forgotten. Take the radio for example. Most of you probably learned that the radio was created by a man named Marconi who sent the first ever transatlantic radio transmission from Cornwall, England to Newfoundland in 1901. But what most people fail to recall is that Marconi's transmission wasn't like radio transmissions today, as his broadcast was in Morse code. Why transmit a message in Morse code, you may be asking? Well, to find out, let's take a brief look at the history of the radio. While the fact that radio signals travel in waves may be common knowledge today, back in the late 19th century, the prevailing idea regarding the radio, and how it worked, was called the whiplash theory. According to this theory, radio transmissions were brief, sudden impulses created by the violence of electric sparks which shot out like a whip cracking in the air. Sure, okay. Many scientists believe this theory, including Marconi, who based the design of his radio around it. But if Marconi and so many others in the scientific community believed in the whiplash theory, then who invented the first sound transmitting radio? Enter Reginald Fessenden, a Canadian-born inventor that I'll bet many of you have probably never heard of. Unlike Marconi and so many others, Fessenden believed that radio waves moved outward in ever-widening concentric circles. And it was this theory that sparked the idea for his radio. On December 23, 1900, while experimenting on Cobb Island outside of Washington, Fessenden's theories were proven correct when he transmitted the following to his partner, Alfred Thiessen. One, two, three, four, is it snowing where you are, Mr. Thiessen? Thiessen received the message and telegraphed back saying that it actually had just begun to snow. That's actually really convenient now that I think about it. While this incident should have gone down in history as the world's first ever spoken radio transmission, Fessenden's broadcast had the bad luck of occurring just one year before Marconi's famous transatlantic broadcast on December 12th, 1921. Despite using different technology at the time, the public had a difficult time distinguishing between the two feats. And to most, Marconi's and Mutt's further broadcasts stood out as the more impressive, as Fessenden's transmission had elapsed just over a kilometer. But Fessenden wasn't done yet. A few years later, in 1906, he attempted a much further transmission from his radio station in Branch Rock, Massachusetts to the crew of a United Fruit Company ship in the waters near Cuba. The entire crew was shocked to hear Christmas carols coming out of Fessenden's radio receiver, though it wasn't until Fessenden received letters from the ship's crew that he knew the broadcast had been successful. Apparently the radio he gave them wasn't designed to send transmissions back, which makes sense, given the limited technology and the fact that it would have been very difficult to pack a radio tower. However, as impressive as this transmission was, Fessenden and his contributions to the creation of the radio still aren't well known. So next time you're listening to the radio, remember that without the contribution of a guy named Reginald Fessington, your listening experience should probably be very different.